In spite of his best efforts, his pledge not to impose on her, Michael found himself gravitating back to Amy's house on lonely hot nights, nights when even the bats flew too slowly to catch their quota of mosquitoes. On those nights, he cocooned himself in Amy's overstuffed living room and played Monopoly or Scrabble. Sometimes they watched rented videos or made Rice Krispie squares, but they never went out anywhere. Michael had learned a lot about Amy and her family during those weeks. He learned that her mother and father had died in a car accident when Amy was only seven, that Amy had been in the car but had survived, although she had a broken leg and fractured ribs. He also found out that her father's parents had taken Amy in and raised her and that Pappy was her only living relative. On some nights, her grandfather watched a movie with them or joined them in a game of Scrabble. Michael liked Pappy. He was a short, wiry man with milky blue eyes, thick white hair, and a goatee that looked like a soft wad of cotton. And he invented such ridiculous words when they played Scrabble that it was easy for them to challenge him, which didn't bother Pappy in the least. He thought the only real fun in playing the game was making up crazy words. But on other nights, when Pappy went next door to Tony Rico's house to play a few hands of poker with his friends, or took a stack of back issues of Popular Mechanics, upstairs to read in bed, Michael and Amy would sit in the dark with only the flickering light from the TV splashing colors on Amy's face, and Michael would move a little farther away from her on the couch, because if he didn't, he would have reached for her. He would have circled his arms around her waist and slid her down on the cushions, but he wouldn't allow himself to do that. If he did, he would have to admit he was using Amy, admit that she was allowing herself to be used. Then he would have to stop coming to her house. He had already taken enough. But on this particular night in late July, Michael found that even sitting on the floor across from Amy, drinking root beer and playing Scrabble, was not enough to quiet his mind. No one had shown up at his front door yet, but he knew it could happen any day if what Josh said was true. I don't think quitch is a word, Amy told him. Michael stared down at the board. The Scrabble piece he was holding felt sticky. Are you going to challenge it? he asked. Amy watched him closely as if she was trying to gauge his mood. Well, it is a triple word score. That's a lot of points. So challenge it. He was hardly able to keep the irritation out of his voice, although he knew it wasn't Amy he was upset with. Amy stared down at her lap. She was sitting cross-legged on one of the couch cushions they had put on the floor. I guess it could be a real word. I mean, I'm not doubting you or anything. Jeez, Amy, this is a game. People make up words if they think they can get away with it. Michael swung his hands out, palms up. They want to win. He reached over and snapped up the dictionary from the coffee table. Doubt me, he said, handing it to her. Amy took the dictionary without looking at him. She seemed to take a long time fumbling through the pages. Then Michael noticed the surprised flutter of her dark lashes, and when she looked up, her delight was so open and childlike that he wanted to grab her by the shoulders and shake her until she understood he was not to be trusted. It's a real word, she said softly. I should have believed you. Michael's jaw tightened. He had had no idea that quitch was a real word. He thought he had made it up. He took the dictionary from her. Sure enough, there it was. Quitch was a gr kind of grass-like weed. He closed the book and let it rest heavily in his lap. Finally, he said, I thought I made it up. But it's okay because you didn't. No, it's not okay. I was trying to cheat. Michael was growing agitated. He needed to get away from Amy. Look, he said, getting to his feet. I'm pretty tired tonight. We'll finish this some other time, all right? Amy didn't say anything. She lifted the Scrabble board from the floor, careful not to jar any of the letters, and gently set it on the coffee table. Michael was already walking toward the door. Amy crossed the room and stood in front of him. She rested the palm of her hand against his chest, as if she were trying to feel his heartbeat. You never try to kiss me, she whispered, keeping her eyes on his hand, on her hand. Michael's body tensed, filling with desire. He told himself that he did not want this to happen. He told himself that Amy was just a good friend. That time in your garage, Amy said, at your birthday party, she sucked in her breath, as if that might give her extra courage to somehow get through this. Didn't you like kissing me? Sure, Michael covered her hand, the one still touching his chest with his own. He could feel the chemistry between them. His heart was racing. Then why? He thought of D Darcy suddenly. She had been in Ocean City with her parents for two weeks, but she was supposed to have gotten home that day. 
Michael wasn't at all sure what Darcy would do if she found out he'd been spending so much time with Amy, probably break up with her. And really, wasn't that what he wanted? Wouldn't it be easier for her if she was the one to break it off? Still. Amy, he began, about to remind her of Darcy, but she was looking up at him now, waiting. Suddenly, there didn't seem to be anything he could say. He leaned forward, pulling her body as close to his as he could, breathing in the scent of her hair, brushing his lips against her ear, her eyelid, her cheek, as if he could never get enough of her. And as his lips came to rest on hers, he realized he'd been fooling himself all along. Now, for the first time, he admitted to himself of how much he really wanted her. Amy, he whispered, I have to go now. If he stayed another minute, it would be too late. He reached behind her and fumbled with the doorknob. Amy had her head tilted to one side, watching him as if she was trying to understand something. Then go, she said simply, stepping aside and helping him to push the door open wider. Each casual step down the front walk cost him. The strain of keeping his body loose and unhurried was unbearable. He would have run if Amy hadn't still been standing at the door. How had he let this happen? Darcy, Darcy was probably back and waiting for his call. He had enough problems to deal with. The last thing he needed was to get tangled up with another girl, and not just any girl, Amy Ruggiero. Yet even as her name entered his thoughts, the intense feeling he had experienced at her front door only moments earlier spread through his body like wildfire. He took a deep breath. Whatever was going to happen would happen. There was no point in fighting it. He understood that now, because this was a world where things you never thought could happen to you did and where you didn't always get to choose your fate or the people you loved. Sometimes it just happened.